Welcome to AQMD on the Air. I'm your host, Mark Carroll. Our guest today is Tom Coquette, Chief Deputy Executive Officer of the California Air Resources Board. He oversees CARB's Motor Vehicle Emission Control Program, which develops regulations and other programs to reduce vehicle emissions in California. He has over 30 years' experience in many aspects of air pollution control and previously worked for the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency's Motor Vehicle Emission Laboratory in a variety of technical, management, and policy positions. Mr. Kaket, thank you for joining us. You're welcome, Mark. What is CARB's plan to help this district, AQMD, address mobile source pollutions, greenhouse gases, uh, and meet the criteria pollutant attainment standards for the future? Well, we know that motor vehicles are a big part of the emission burden that's in the south coast and actually all of our urban areas in California. So we continue to push really hard to get the best technologies on motor vehicles that we can for the criteria pollutants. And then we have a parallel effort right now which is to try to reduce their carbon emissions for climate change purposes. And so far we're finding that there's really not any conflict. We can end up with really clean cars for smog emissions and get more efficient low carbon cars as well on the road. And so we're putting a major effort into turn, trying to develop those technologies, make sure they're emission standards that drive them onto cars and get them into the fleet in time for both uh, attainment uh, deadlines of the, of the South Coast in particular and San Joaquin Valley and for our longer term projection of trying to reduce uh, climate emissions by 80% by 2050. And how is CARB getting those cars on the road, the cleaner cars, and even broader? Uh, there's a lot of zero emission cars in the pipeline, fuel cells and electric cars what's the outlook for when they'll be coming online and how people can join the, the group of, of clean air drivers? Well, we're trying to look at this fairly holistically. Uh, one of the first objectives is to get the gasoline cars that we're going to have for quite a while on the road, make sure that those are absolutely as clean as possible. And their emissions are starting to get close to zero. You know, I think we've had reductions from the 1970 level of about 99.7 percent in terms of the smog forming emissions. And of course we're continuing to push on getting the particulate emissions from diesels, including the ones on the road, the so-called legacy fleet, get those cleaned up with retrofit uh, particulate filters, get the new ones as low as possible on PM. There's very little PM coming out of the new heavy-duty trucks and off-road equipment and then get their NOx emissions down. All that is necessary as a, the building blocks for attainment. Then as we look uh, beyond that, because we know that's not enough, we have to look at what other technologies can we get into the marketplace. And so we have a ZEV mandate for the passenger vehicles. We're expanding that in the uh, next year and that will end up with about 15% of the New sales of vehicles uh, by 2025 will be zero emitting vehicles. We think that's a substantial enough number that it will create a sustainable marketplace for these zero emission vehicles. And those, of course, are battery electric vehicles, some plug-in vehicles, and hydrogen vehicles. So when you look at the whole picture, it ends up with something that I think can support attainment of clean air standards for the South Coast in the longer term, They're talking about 2030, for example. and then just follow that same path right on to a point where uh, greenhouse gas emissions can be reduced by 70 or 80 percent, which is what most countries in the world have adopted as a goal for climate change. Uh, you mentioned heavy-duty vehicles. Uh, I know the heavy-duty trucks uh, have been, especially at the ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach, have been a key target to uh, make them as clean as possible. What are CARB's efforts and what are the ports and AQMD and others doing to make sure that the heavy-duty trucks, particularly at the port, which are a major source of air pollution in this region, uh, what are they doing to clean up the emissions from trucks? Well, I think the uh, ports and the AQMD in particular and with state with some uh, bond money, almost a billion dollars worth of bond money, have worked really hard to try to get the cleanest technologies for those trucks and the equipment that's right at the port and that do the short haul effort. But you have to also have a complementary effort to get the trucks that sometimes come to the port or near the port or pick up from some of the port transfer stations and take products to other places. And those are actually a, a very large source of emissions as well. So we can kind of look at, we have to deal with the uh, line haul trucks all the way down to the trucks that are captured right in the, in the port area. And you know the biggest thing right now is to try to reduce the health impacts of the particulate emissions. So right. if it's not a natural gas vehicle already at the port, then it's going to be a diesel vehicle that's got a particulate filter in it. And particulate filters are 99% efficient. So we're getting huge reduction in the amount of soot that comes out and affects the uh, neighborhoods around the ports or people that live near freeways that have a high amount of 
truck traffic. So that's kind of the first step. In the, we have emission standards that cut the NOx emissions mm -hmm. from heavy duty trucks and from off-road by about 95%. And those are just starting to be rolled in in the 2010 model year for trucks and 2013 model year for uh, construction equipment, for example. And those will end up making big cuts in uh, NOx emissions as well, which is probably the single most important thing, the biggest single source of emissions that affects whether or not the South Coast can attain the ozone standard by, by uh, 2025 to 2030 uh, time frame. For the PM standard, I think this 99% cut in PM is sufficient to get you to the, the most near-term target you have, which is 2014, mm -hmm. for meeting the federal particulate standard. And are these heavy-duty trucks, which you're talking about diesel and you're talking about um, gas trucks, um, natural gas trucks, are there other technologies that are coming down the line which could also add to the, to the benefits? Well, there's, yeah, I think there's a lot of effort uh, going into particularly urban trucks, maybe somewhat smaller ones that would uh, be an evolution of the battery and electric drive technology that we're seeing now commercialized on cars. Mm -hmm. So we see a lot of that. There's some hybrids in there for, that are, are uh, aimed at reducing fuel use and increasing efficiency, which is a greenhouse gas strategy. Uh, and then people are looking at uh, the general movement of goods and how can we get that on electric basis and whether that's electric trucks within the basin or whether it's electric rail or various types of technologies, um, mag technology, magnetic technologies, things mm -hmm. like that are all in the works. Um, they all have huge challenges, of course, because anything that's revolutionary rather than evolutionary has high risks, but given the and challenges, costs, yeah, and high costs, but yeah. given the challenges of the public health impacts of, of uh, air pollution and the greenhouse gas targets that we have, uh, it, it just seems like you have to have a balanced system that looks at the near-term accomplishments that can be uh, achieved, and at the same time, you invest in the longer-term ones. Well, another effort to look out beyond the present is uh, with regard to greenhouse gases in AB 32. Uh, that's the state's effort to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and set targets for uh, future dates. How is CARB going to address the greenhouse gas reduction uh, requirements of AB 32? What, what has CARB done so far, and uh, where are we headed, and will we meet those targets? Well, for AB 32, the targets are actually fairly short term. It, it requires a certain reduction in emissions by um, 2020. And we have a plan in place, we have a target, uh, mission regulations, other programs uh, are in place or being implemented now that will achieve that, that target. There's no, no question about it in my mind. Uh, but 2020 isn't <clears throat> very far. It, we're looking at getting back to 1990 levels. In other words, just offsetting the growth in activity that occurred since 1990. And it's not anywhere near the 80% reduction that's needed um, if you're going to stabilize. We're not going to do it by ourselves, but as a leadership position, we need those reductions to show that you can take actions that would result in, when done on a worldwide basis, the stabilization of the temperature of the, uh, of the world. And so, what we look at 2020 as just a checkpoint along the way, and we, is it, are we on the right track mm -hmm. and towards a 2050 type target? And we are, we will make the 2021, but beyond that, there are many, many more things that are more transformational that will have to occur uh, if we're gonna actually reduce our carbon emissions by about 80%. And that's not just mobile, but that's every single sector. Uh, what role do you see local air districts, in particular South Coast Aid Committee, and local governments playing in assisting CARB in achieving those, those goals and beyond? One of the strategies of AB 32 is to try to get in place the uh, tools, whether they be regulatory or, or otherwise, that will sort of start this transformation towards a low-carbon future. And one of them is uh, SB 375, which in essence puts uh, greenhouse gas planning into local planning activities. Mm -hmm. And so that's one of the, the major things at the local area that needs to be accomplished is we need to be able to figure out ways to reduce the amount of traffic that's occurring, the amount of uh, called vehicle miles traveled, VMT growth that continues to occur in desirable places to live like here in uh, Southern California. And uh, that has many, many aspects that can improve the quality of life, including uh, you know, more infill activity, uh, more uh, jobs, housing balance, uh, things that are on a fairly long-term basis, but are things that if you don't start today, we'll never uh, really see a, a big benefit by these 2030 to 2050 type 
target. So those are, I think that's one of the really, really important ones that has to happen at a local government level. I know that there's big differences between how Northern California is set up and Southern California is set up and we're much more spread out. And so uh, vehicle miles traveled is a lot uh, and we're more developed uh, throughout the state. Mm -hmm. uh, so does that pose a challenge in trying to accomplish these goals but with th the state being so diverse um, and how people drive being so different throughout the state? Yeah, well, we work very closely with um, different local agencies and regional governments to try to come up with the targets for the uh, VMT reduction and general carbon reduction uh, for for individual cities and, and uh, regional areas. And uh, it's different for each one, as you, as you point out. It's it's easier for some to move uh, substantially and for others it's it's more difficult. But I think the the point is at this point, it's a kind of is a transformational thing. People are, local government are not looking heavily at um, including in their general plans greenhouse gas until now. And so that's a big change. You know, we've looked at the carbon intensity of fuels. That's a big change, something we hadn't done before. Back in, in uh, 2004, we did the first greenhouse gas standards for cars. Mm -hmm. And uh, more recently, we did greenhouse gas standards for interstate trucks, for the trailers they pull, and uh, to reduce, reduce uh, uh, the energy required to bring a trailer down the, uh, the road. And so those are the kind of things that have started. But the question will be, can we keep those kind of tools, regulatory tools and other incentive tools on the right track and can we uh, strengthen them enough to actually meet the long-term goals we need for uh, both air quality and for climate change. Well, let's talk about that a little, the incentive goals. Uh, one, obviously local governments have to play a role, but so does business and so do other sectors in the economy. How can CARB and AQMD uh, engage and encourage the business community uh, and others uh, to help make the transition to cleaner technologies? One of the big challenges on some of the cleaner mobile technologies is the infrastructure. And uh, if we're going to have electric cars, we need to be able to charge them somewhere, and probably more than just in our house. And if we're going to have hydrogen vehicles, which I think will be probably the biggest transformational change because the hydrogen fuel cell vehicles are pretty much have no limits on them other than infrastructure. You can drive them for large distances. They don't have some of the uh, range anxiety problems that electric vehicles may have. So we're going to have both these technologies, each one of them serving a different role. But on the hydrogen side, uh, there's more difficulty in the infrastructure because you have to essentially build gasoline stations for hydrogen and they're not cheap. They're millions of dollars. And uh, the business case for doing that is still a bit foggy at the end of the, the tunnel and I don't think government can afford to pay for it all. So there's those kind of major challenges which are barriers to achieving these goals. We think we can overcome them. We have a, a plan in place with uh, many partners including the, the district and businesses uh, to establish a hydrogen infrastructure with the focus being Southern California. There's now a collaborative to do the electric um, charging infrastructure and make sure there are no problems there. And try to figure out what exactly do we need beyond the charger in your house. Mm -hmm. And that's being done with, again, districts and with utilities and other people. And then I think there's going to have to be uh, some of the big major headline businesses are going to have to step up and encourage their employees in some way to either purchase these vehicles or to help them provide the infrastructure such as workplace electric charging uh, and hopefully we can figure out ways to reward them uh, uh, psychically if not economically to uh, to do this because transformation that occurs fairly rapidly is is difficult and uh, to meet these goals that have been set out for air quality and greenhouse gas it takes it may sound like a long time away but if we aren't making the transformation now we'll never get to the end point well, great uh, thanks very much for joining us Tom Coquette uh, and for your leadership and your commitment to cleaning the air Thank you very much. Well, that's our show. I'm Mark Carroll. Thank you for watching AQMD on the air. Visit us at cleanairconnections.org to learn how you can help us clean the air that we breathe.